I'm going to ask Becky uh, next here because um, you've had to be your own advocate for care for many, many years and in a way have found other doctors to see. And um, so I think being your own advocate for your own health and, and not just your glaucoma, but your uh, whole system. Could you talk to that a little bit about your experience and, and how you have been your own advocate. healthcare advocate? <laughs> Sure. Well, I found out uh, that I had really high intraocular pressure when I was in my very early 30s. I think 31, 32, so I was pretty young. Didn't run in my family. I had no idea what it was. Um, and my readings were 25 and 26. I just went in to get a new pair of glasses. So I was really surprised. Um, but I was, the good thing was, I was diagnosed before I had any damage. So that was, has been really key, and my prognosis was that it was caught so early. Um, and for many years, I was very stable. And I would go in to see the uh, ophthalmologist in Minneapolis uh, every four to six months. And he did the series of tests, the OCT, the visual field, and I was very stable. Uh, and then um, maybe eight years ago, I suddenly had some small amount of damage. And so uh, they were watching me closer, and I went on um, several medications. And uh, I think I'm, I was told then at that time, even though my eye pressures went down, and they at that time were very, very high. And they went down um, into the mid-teens, but the progression continued. And so um, that was when I started uh, reaching out for, for additional help because, um, I wanted to ensure, you know, I was still pretty young, <laughs> and I wanted to ensure that I was going to be able to, to continue to see. So I listed five ways that I've been an advocate, and I, I'll quickly go through these, but one is uh, that I have worked to understand the technical aspects of these tests. So for me, the visual field test, I, it, I don't have any visual field damage yet, even though I've had this for 25 years. Um, and so the doctor tells me I haven't had any progression, and that's great. Um, but the OCT test, the optical coherence tomography test, uh, also shows structural damage. So that can show damage before you have any functional visual loss, and that's where I have had damage, um, fairly significant in one of my eyes. And so I go in, and the doctor gives me those tests every quarter, and I can see there's a with the Zeiss test, there's a progression analysis. And you can see exactly how you're progressing. So I've learned about those tests working closely with my doctors um, so that I know what my rate of progression is. The other thing that I've done is the doctor early on had me take one of these diurnal um, pressure tests. So I went in every hour during the day, started early morning and went through the end of the day. And I know they also can do them throughout the entire night. Um, I haven't done the overnight one, but they measured my pressure throughout the whole day and mine actually jumps around very significantly if I'm not being, if I'm not under control with appropriate treatment. So I was seeing jumps in my eye pressure of over 10 millimeters of mercury during that day. So what my doctor told me was make sure that I go in to get my eye pressure checked on my regular visits during the high point, which for me is the early morning. So I try and get an appointment in the early morning so that I know how high my eye pressure is and also so that I, um, you know, there's, it's a good comparison over time because mine is jumping around a lot. Although now on, on the medicines that they have me on, it has stabilized and that range is less. But that was really important, excuse me, was to understand how that was jumping around. Um, thirdly is, uh, I learned that I have both really high eye pressure because they told me I likely have juvenile glaucoma, so it can get up into the 40s without treatment. So even though it typically progresses slowly for people, in my case, I'm, I'm just guessing, but from what I've seen, if, if I'm not being treated well, it can go relatively quickly. So I can see damage relatively quickly because it can go so high. And so I'm really careful. I don't ever forget putting my eye drops in. You know, if I think there was an air bubble in it, I give it another drop. And, and um, 
it says on the side of some of my drops that it should be this temperature range. It can't get too cold and it can't get too hot. And I'm really careful about that. If I go on vacation, I don't put it in my luggage that's going underneath the airplane and it could freeze. I, I just want those drops to be working for me. And I also am really careful about my appointments so that um, I don't miss them. And even if I get really busy, uh, I recently, they, they stabilized me and, and um, my progression stopped, um, but just uh, recently, um, after six years of very stable readings, I suddenly, the eye pressure in one of my eyes jumped up into the 30s with, um, on the strongest medications. So that just happened right before the holidays. And if I wouldn't have gone in for that regular reading, I mean, I didn't think it was gonna be any different from any of the last six years where I'd been going in every quarter and all of a sudden it was super high. So to, it's really important that I found that because I only, I did have damage on the OCT, but it was only a couple months worth of damage. And if I wouldn't have gone in for that appointment, it could have been really a lot worse. And then I also work closely with my ophthalmologist. I had a doctor in Minneapolis that I saw for 25 years. He just retired, so I found a new one in Minneapolis. But he um, also encouraged me to go see Dr. Katz at the Will's Eye Hospital, who you guys um, all heard speak earlier today. And I see him, I try and see him at least once a year. Uh, and he prescribes a plan for me, and, which is really helpful. He says, we're gonna try X, and we're gonna do it for this period of time, and if that doesn't work, we're gonna move on, and we're gonna do this. So I always know like, what you know, is coming, I guess, which is helpful. And um, in March of 2017, he told me I needed the SLT surgery on my right eye, um, and I was scared. I really didn't wanna get eye surgery. I, I really didn't want to get it. And so, and it was borderline. They showed me all the data and I thought it's a borderline progression. And so I waited, um, but he was of course right. And um, I just got that surgery probably eight weeks ago. He did it for me out in Philadelphia and it worked great. It worked really well. Um, but because of that spike that I had, um, I did lose some microns of Retinal, um, retinal nerve fiber thickness. So I, I mean, I, I did um, have an issue that will um, you know, cause some damage over time. So uh, you know, I shouldn't have been scared and I should have just um, done what he said because of course he was right. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I guess is I heard earlier that um, the relationship between uh, eye pressure and blood pressure was, was discussed and uh, in my case, in addition to the really high eye pressure, I also have naturally really low blood pressure. Like I go in for an a exam and it's 90 over 60. I could be totally stressed out and running around and it's, that's like about as high as it gets. <laughs> and um, so that was something that needed to be considered in my treatment as well uh, because I did have low ocular perfusion pressure. I actually went to see a doctor in Dr. Katz referred me to a specialist in Indianapolis and I had blood flow tests done on my eye. So that is you know, something that I did as well. So those five things I think are, have helped me. Um, uh, and again, working really closely with my doctor and, and I should also add a disclaimer, you know, I don't wanna give any medical advice because I'm just a patient, but um, uh, this is, these are steps that I did working with my doctor that I think have really helped me. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah.